checking out uh, the rules. Hold in production in association with your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser. Proud to be your bud. Present the featured bout of the evening. This bout is sanctioned by the Association of Boxing Commissions. Staff person in charge, Mr. Jim Hall of Missouri. Our physician in attendance at ringside is Dr. Don Chumley. The timekeeper, Ted Van. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system are Jim Huey, L.P. Lane, and Mike Johnson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Bradley Theater here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, let's get her! This is in the heavyweight division. When the bell rings, the men in charge of the action referee, Kevin Champion. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with gold letters, weighing in at 228 pounds. From Houston, Texas, he brings a professional record of 14 victories, 10 KOs to his credit against only two defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, he is Sherman. Bernard Griffin! And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing the red trunks with black trim, weighing 220 pounds. Fighting out of Jay, Oklahoma. He brings a professional record of 40 victories. 35 by KO. Only two defeats. He is the former WBO World Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, he is Tommy the Duke Morrison. I want you to obey my commands at all times. Any questions? Good luck to both of you. Go back to your corners. Final instructions from Kevin Champion. Tommy Morrison, the game face is on. He said uh, he has worked hard, he has run the extra mile, he is down to 220 pounds. And there is no more room for mistakes in the career of just 25-year-old Tommy Morrison. A happier, more relaxed Tommy Morrison. He said tonight his style, more movement from his head, he'll work the angles, he'll keep the offense, but he'll keep his focus and mix in some defensive tactics in there. More movement with the head. Inside, throwing his own punches, mid-move. Sherman Griffin's uh, fight against Buster Mathis, his last came uh, last month, April 2nd. Tommy Morrison's last fight, March 22nd, against former sparring partner Brian Scott. A second-round knockout, TKO by Morrison, but in a fight in which he was uh, tagged by his former sparring partner. So Morrison in a fight will get hit, and that's what Sherman Griffin is banking on. He says uh, in the heavyweight division, you know you're going to get hit, and he doesn't think that Morrison can take a heavyweight punch. Yeah, and it could be who is ever there, the firstest with the mostest, gets the knockout in this fight. But I can tell you from personal experience, when you are relaxed and when you're happy in the ring like Tommy is now, when you are relaxed, you take the punches better. You roll with the shot. You're not tense and tight like he was against Michael Bent. Going out there searching for the knockout, struggling if you miss it. There's that left hook, the patented left hook from Morrison. Sherman Griffin has a pretty wicked uppercut. He could do it with both hands. Morrison is waiting for him to throw it with the right, so he might be open for the left hook. Morrison has an extremely fast left hook. For a heavyweight, it is one of the fastest. And it is a hook thrown on the inside. He brings the elbow right behind it. It's a picture-perfect left hook. There's an overhead right. And there goes Griffin in the first. Sherman Griffin from the right hand. It was the left hook we were talking about. But the right hand did the damage. Tommy said, I want to throw more right hands tonight, only to set up my left hook. And you could be sure Morrison is relaxed now, and he wants to go in and stop it right here. No chances for Morrison. Seek and destroy. Griffin said he won't take the solid shots of Morrison. That he knows how to roll off of punches and fade away and backslide, but he backslided, slid to the canvas. And the crowd chanting, Tommy, Tommy here in round number one. Griffin now in a position where he has to survive the opening round. 
Yeah, hurt again. Tommy Morrison, always a fast starter. 28 KOs in the first three for Tommy. 17 of his 35 knockouts have come in the first round. Great starter. But what he's been criticized for is he fades late. There's Griffin can hang on. And Griffin has to hold on here in the final seconds. Back up against the ropes. It's allowing Morrison to flail away, but it looks like Griffin gets by the first. Tommy Morrison, big punches from him in that opening round. The overhand right, staggered Sherman Griffin. Down he goes, following up with a left hook, although it missed. And some jabbing, more movement from the head from Tommy Morrison. You step in with that overhand right, and down goes your opponent. One more time. Watch the, the head movement from Morrison when he's punching. If you can throw your head with your punches, you have so much more weight behind the shot. Your head, your upper body with each shot. And that, of course, three different angles of the one knockout. Uh, maybe wondering if the three knockdown rule was in effect. Three angle rule yes. in effect, yes. yes. So how will Griffin now come out for the second round? He's got to move. He's got to get on that bicycle now. You have to move, and that's what he does. You cannot stand in there. People look at Tommy Morrison, the fighters that are out there, the heavyweights, and they say, he's not that good. In this fight, Sherman Griffin thought Tommy will walk right to me. I'll take his left hook away. Well, he took his left hook, took it right on the chin, and didn't take it away. People look at Tommy, and they say, oh, he's not that good. He can't hit that hard. And they get the ring. It's a different story. Tommy knocks him out or makes their leg do funny things. Griffin's a fighter, likes to fight on the inside, likes to punch back. Defense is not the priority for him either. And uh, quite frankly, Tommy Morrison liked that combination, felt that uh, it plays into his hand against a fighter of that nature. Well, you know, he's tough, and he has never been knocked out. He's lost twice. Sherman Griffin, oh, again, big left hook. A couple of left hooks from him. He said he would take that left hook away from Morrison by moving into it. That is a dangerous thing to do. You move into that left hook, you get so much power from that hook, like two locomotives running together, instead of pulling away from it. When Griffin scored his impressive victory over Jeff Lampkin for the USBA Cruiserweight title, he said that he fought Lampkin when Lampkin didn't want to fight, and I boxed him when he didn't want to box. And right now, Griffin is trying to box Morrison, who would like to fight. Oh, yeah, well, like this fight, Griffin was down in the first round from Lampton. He got up and stuck to his fight plan. Now it looks like Griffin had a wake-up call, and he is sticking more to his fight yeah. plan. Stick and move. Griffin thought Morrison called him a one-dimensional fighter, while I am multi-dimensional. Yeah. And he says, we have a fight plan. I'm going to follow it to perfection. Well, he's found out the one dimension of Tommy Morrison could be enough to do yes. away with a Sherman Griffin. That one dimension is so overpowering for Tommy Morrison. Left hook. See how fast that left hook is? That is a powerful left hook, and it is not a slap either. It's a hook. The elbow comes behind the punch, and the shoulder is in there. Oh. Upstairs, downstairs goes Morrison. This is where Griffin didn't want to be. Remember how he was boxing earlier this round? He said he was going to counterpunch Tommy tonight. Morrison, 220 pounds. The fight after Ben just two fights ago, he was up to 238 pounds. And scoring quickly with the left hand. Well, he's not through. Sherman Griffin landed this good power punch in that second round. You know, Morrison has a good left hook, but he is susceptible to the left hook. He relies a lot on that punch, and he landed that punch well in that second round. Sometimes when you're throwing that left hook, you forget to set it up. The way to set it up is you throw the right hand, even if it's just a pawn, even if you just put it out there. And he knocked down Griffin in the first round, Tommy did, from the overhand right. Tommy Morrison, one of the most exciting fighters around. He has that star quality because his fights look like they are all choreographed by uh, Sylvester Stallone's staff. If you remember the Ray Mercer fight, the 20 unanswered the shots by Mercer on Morrison. That was a Hollywood knockout at its best. Yeah, at its best. Tommy Morrison.
Morrison, you never forget a knockout like that. And Morrison still has not. Cut and and remember, he has 35 KOs with a hammer on his side of the ledger. That was Morrison's first loss. Hard to imagine Tommy Morrison outboxing somebody. And that's what he did to win the WBO title against George Foreman, trying to stay away from the power of Foreman. Uh, not really distinguishing himself, although it showed that he could back up, have a game plan, and to know how to beat that particular fighter on that particular night. You know, he said it showed how focused I was. He said he dedicated 100% to one thing, and that was beating George Foreman. And remember how he moved in that fight? Remember how he stuck to his fight plan? Remember how he concentrated? He didn't go in there looking for the knockout? That is something that a hometown crowd can do to you, too. They fire you up, they rev you up so hot before the fight is in those first couple of rounds that you have to calm yourself down. Sometimes you're lying on your corner to say, all right, calm down. You've still got to fight this match. Don't worry about that crowd. You just settle down. Sherman, Sometimes the crowd is a hindrance to a fight. Sherman Griffin trying to settle down after being knocked down in the first round. He also, in reading the fight-by-fight fight of Tommy Morrison, knows that the Morrison has gone beyond six rounds on only three occasions in 42 fights. So Griffin uh, trying to take Morrison into the later rounds, letting him uh, possibly punch himself out. That has to be part of the strategy of Sherman Griffin. And he's had two knockouts after the fifth round, too. Slows down after the fifth round. Well, he went the 12 rounds with it. Oh, may not have to worry about it. Fifth round or the tenth round. There's a three quick right hands. Speed. Welcome back to the historic Brady Theater in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Our main event, Tommy Morrison in the red trunks going up against Sherman Griffin in the black trunks. Good first three rounds for Morrison, but if you just turn the clock back a couple of years against Ray Mercer in the first three rounds, Tommy Morrison looked at the top of his game before he ran out of gas in the fourth and then was uh, pelted every which way by Mercer in the fifth round. And now Sherman Griffin knows about that very well. Oh, you yeah. see now a little mark under the right eye of Tommy Morrison. And Sherman uh, Griffin, who complied with Morrison, especially early when he went down in the first round. But now it appears that uh, Griffin looks to be even a little fresher than Morrison heading into the fourth. Well, he said he's trying to develop his right hand more, Sherman Griffin did. And he was landing some good right hands there, but not much power behind him. Griffin has had hand trouble with that right. And Morrison now is keeping a little bit more distance from Griffin. Yeah, remember, the, look at the difference of Tommy Morrison now as compared to that Tommy Morrison in the first round. Remember when he put Griffin down, he was all over him the whole round? Sherman. Well, now he's giving more respect. And, and again, when I, I, I go back to this because the big knock to Tommy Morrison has been that he punches himself out early. He's a hard hitter. Good power. But he now sometimes power too much in his first three. Now you say, hey, he went 12 full rounds against George Foreman, but it was a kind of fight that uh, he really didn't throw many punches. I mean, he kept his distance. He squared off. He got away, got in, got out. But they're not as busy as... Uh, you know, we have seen him the, uh, relatively in the first three rounds. Well, sometimes when you have an opponent in front of you and you go in for the kill, it's a dangerous thing to do. You go in there trying to think that you can knock him out. You go in there and you try to knock him out, you just punch yourself out. Back in the same corner like the Ray Mercer fight, against the rope. And now it is Morrison for the moment holding on. Griffin coming on here in the fourth. And there is the reset by Morrison that we saw time and again against uh, Foreman. Visibly winded. The crowd at the Vegas booing that maneuver, yep. although it helped Morrison uh, secure a decision. Down to 220 for this fight. He's not been this low. He's not been under 220 since John Morton way back in October of 1990. And now Sherman Griffin turning it up. He has sensed it. I say that only because that may have made him weak for this fight. He may not have any energy left. 
the uppercut of Griffin. This fight 